Have you ever wondered why some men, despite their best intentions, always seem to finish last in love? Welcome to What Turns Men Into Nice Guys, The Hidden Root Cause. Today we're diving deep into a puzzling phenomenon that's left both men and women scratching their heads. You've probably heard the phrase, nice guys finish last. But what exactly is a nice guy? We're not talking about genuinely kind men. No, we're referring to those who wear niceness like a mask, hoping it'll win them love and affection. These are the men who bend over backwards to please others, only to end up frustrated and alone. But here's the million dollar question. What really drives this behavior? Is it just about being too nice or is there something deeper at play? Today, we'll uncover the hidden root cause that turns well-meaning men into self-sabotaging, nice guys. And trust me, it's not what you might expect. So buckle up and get ready to challenge everything you thought you knew about nice guys. By the end of this video, you'll have a whole new perspective on this age-old dating dilemma. Let's start by breaking down what we mean by nice guy syndrome. These aren't just men who happen to be kind. No, we're talking about a specific pattern of behavior that often backfires in relationships. Common characteristics of nice guys include always putting others first, avoiding conflict at all costs, and seeking approval constantly. They're the ones who will drop everything to help a crush move apartments, even if it means missing an important work deadline. They're perpetual people pleasers, often to their own detriment. Now, here's where the misconceptions come in. Many people, including nice guys themselves, believe this behavior stems from genuine kindness or moral superiority. But in reality, it's often rooted in fear and insecurity. Nice guys aren't necessarily nicer than other men. They're just more afraid of rejection and conflict. And here's the paradox that trips up so many nice guys. Being nice in this way is actually problematic. Why? Because it's not authentic. It's a strategy, often unconscious, to gain love and approval. But relationships built on strategies rather than genuine connection are doomed to fail. Moreover, this type of niceness often comes with hidden expectations. Nice guys may not vocalize it, but they usually expect their kindness to be rewarded with romantic interest or sexual attraction. When that doesn't happen, resentment builds, leading to the infamous nice guy complaints about being friend-zoned or women only liking jerks. In essence, the nice guy syndrome is a lose-lose situation. The nice guy feels unappreciated and resentful, while their love interests feel manipulated and guilty. It's a recipe for frustration all around. To truly understand the nice guy phenomenon, we need to dive into the psychology driving these behaviors. It's a complex web of fears, insecurities, and misguided beliefs about relationships. At the core of nice guy behavior is an intense fear of rejection and conflict. These men have often learned, usually from childhood experiences, that expressing their true feelings or needs leads to abandonment or disapproval. As a result, they develop a strategy of people-pleasing to ensure they're always liked and never rejected. This fear is closely tied to low self-esteem and deep-seated insecurity. Nice guys often don't believe they're worthy of love or respect, just as they are. They think they need to earn affection through constant giving and self-sacrifice. This belief creates a vicious cycle. The more they give without reciprocation, the lower their self-esteem sinks. Another key aspect of nice guy psychology is the concept of covert contracts. These are unspoken agreements that nice guys make in their minds. They might think, if I'm always there for her, she'll eventually fall in love with me. The problem? The other person never agreed to this contract and is often unaware it exists. When these unspoken expectations aren't met, nice guys feel betrayed and resentful. This resentment often manifests as passive-aggressive behavior. Unable to express their anger or disappointment directly, nice guys might use subtle jabs, silent treatment, or backhanded compliments. They struggle to set boundaries or say no, leading to a buildup of frustration that comes out in unhealthy ways. It's crucial to understand that these behaviors aren't consciously manipulative. Nice guys genuinely believe they're doing the right thing. They're often shocked and hurt when their actions backfire or are perceived negatively. This disconnect between intention and impact is at the heart of the nice guy dilemma. 
While individual psychology plays a crucial role, we can't ignore the societal and cultural factors that contribute to the nice guy phenomenon. Our environment shapes our beliefs about relationships, and in recent decades, these messages have become increasingly complex and often contradictory. Let's start with media portrayals of relationships. How many romantic comedies have you seen where the persistent nice guy eventually wins the girl? These narratives reinforce the idea that relentless pursuit and self-sacrifice are the keys to romantic success. They rarely show the importance of mutual attraction, compatibility, or healthy boundaries. Then there's the misinterpretation of feminist messages. Many nice guys have internalized the idea that traditional masculinity is toxic. In an attempt to be allies, they swing to the other extreme, suppressing all assertiveness and becoming overly deferential. But this misses the point of feminism, which advocates for equality and respect, not for men to become doormats. We're also dealing with rapidly changing gender roles and expectations. As society moves away from traditional models of masculinity, many men feel lost. They're told to be emotionally open, but not too needy, to be strong, but not domineering. Nice guys often respond to this confusion by trying to be what they think women want, rather than developing their authentic selves. Lastly, we can't overlook the impact of online dating and social media. These platforms can amplify insecurities and create unrealistic expectations. The constant exposure to curated versions of others' lives and relationships can make nice guys feel even more inadequate and the seeming abundance of options can make it harder to invest in genuine connections, leading to a cycle of superficial interactions and disappointment. All these factors create a perfect storm for nice guy behavior. Men are bombarded with conflicting messages about what it means to be a good partner, leading many to adopt a people-pleasing persona as a safe default. But as we've seen, this strategy often backfires, leaving both nice guys and their potential partners frustrated and unfulfilled. Now we arrive at the crux of our discussion, the hidden root cause behind the nice guy syndrome. While we've explored various contributing factors, at the core of this issue lies a fundamental problem, a lack of authentic self-expression. Nice guys struggle profoundly with showing their true feelings and desires. They've learned, often from a young age, that expressing their genuine thoughts or needs leads to rejection or disapproval. This fear runs so deep that they often lose touch with what they truly want, always defaulting to what they think others expect of them. It's not just that they're afraid to speak up. Many nice guys genuinely don't know how to identify or articulate their own desires. This fear of authenticity often leads to the suppression of traditionally masculine traits. To be clear, we're not talking about toxic masculinity here. Rather, it's about healthy assertiveness, the ability to stand up for oneself, and the courage to face conflicts head on. Nice guys often mistakenly believe that suppressing these traits makes them more appealing or morally superior. In reality, this suppression only leads to internal frustration and external confusion. The inability to express themselves authentically also manifests in a difficulty setting boundaries. Nice guys struggle to say no or to express dissatisfaction, fearing that doing so will make them less likable or lovable. They often find themselves agreeing to things they don't want to do or tolerating behavior that makes them uncomfortable, all in the name of being nice. Perhaps most damagingly, nice guys consistently prioritize others' needs over their own. They've internalized the belief that self-sacrifice is the ultimate virtue in relationships, but this constant self-neglect doesn't lead to healthy, balanced partnerships. Instead, it breeds resentment and prevents the formation of genuine connections based on mutual respect and understanding. The tragic irony is that in trying so hard to be liked, nice guys end up presenting a false version of themselves to the world. They become a blank canvas onto which others can project their expectations, rather than a real person with unique thoughts, feelings, and desires. This lack of authenticity is what truly lies at the heart of the nice guy problem. It's not about being too nice, it's about not being real. So, how do we break this cycle? How can nice guys move towards healthier, more authentic relationships? The path forward involves several key steps. First and foremost, developing self-awareness is crucial. 
nice guys need to start recognizing their patterns of behavior and the underlying fears and beliefs driving them. This might involve reflecting on past experiences, journaling, or even seeking therapy. The goal is to understand that being nice has become a strategy, not a genuine expression of self. Next, learning to communicate assertively is vital. This doesn't mean becoming aggressive or domineering. Rather, it's about expressing one's thoughts, feelings, and needs clearly and respectfully. It's saying, I disagree when you disagree, or I'd prefer not to when you don't want to do something. This skill takes practice, but it's essential for building genuine connections. Building genuine self-confidence is another critical step. This isn't about developing a fake bravado, but about recognizing one's inherent worth. Nice guys need to internalize the idea that they are valuable and lovable as they are, not because of what they do for others. This involves setting personal goals, developing interests outside of romantic pursuits, and learning to validate themselves rather than constantly seeking external approval. Perhaps most importantly, breaking the nice guy cycle requires embracing vulnerability and authenticity. This means being willing to show up as your true self, even if it means risking rejection. It's about being honest about your feelings, desires, and limitations. Paradoxically, this kind of genuine vulnerability often leads to deeper, more meaningful connections than constant people-pleasing ever could. Remember, the goal isn't to stop being kind or considerate. It's about ensuring that your kindness comes from a place of genuine care and choice, rather than fear and obligation. By embracing authenticity, former nice guys can develop real, reciprocal relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. As we've explored today, the hidden root cause behind nice guy behavior isn't actually niceness. It's a lack of authentic self-expression. This stems from deep-seated fears and societal pressures that lead men to suppress their true selves in a misguided attempt to win love and approval. But real, lasting relationships aren't built on people-pleasing or self-sacrifice. They're founded on authenticity, mutual respect, and genuine connection. So, if you've recognized some nice guy tendencies in yourself, I encourage you to reflect on your behaviors and motivations. Are you being truly authentic in your relationships, or are you hiding behind a mask of niceness? Remember, the goal isn't to stop being kind, but to ensure your kindness comes from a place of genuine care, rather than fear or obligation. By embracing your authentic self, you open the door to healthier, more fulfilling relationships. Thank you for watching, and here's to building genuine connections in all areas of our lives.